Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, Dylan here. We have an incredible new update from former first lady and potential, God willing, future first lady, Melania Trump that I am so excited to share with you guys today. This is a woman who I believe is such an amazing woman that I think she is going to be the next first lady and play a really big part in saving this country. This is a woman who time and time again, we have seen her, her presence with Donald J. Trump together. Again, that potential God willing future president, Donald Trump and Melania Trump, you know, they did some amazing things for this country. And we have just about seven months until we get to that November election. And I think today we have some awesome news that is really fortifying my belief that that's actually going to happen. So I want to share some things happening to Melania Trump. Melania Trump also and Donald Trump, they had an Easter message that I want to share with you guys where they actually talk about God and about Jesus, about the resurrection of Jesus and not like Joe Biden talks about on Easter, he, he talked about how it's the transge transgender day of visibility, which uh, certain other leaders said that that was a, just a massive uh, disgrace, which I believe was, was a, just a big disgrace to the meaning of Easter. So before we jump in, we're going to read the Bible because God comes first. Amen. <laughs> Comment amen down below if you believe that God comes first. First, all right, that's what we do on our show here. So if you want to come along, click subscribe so you never miss my updates. I challenge you to keep up with all my videos, all right? I only post five a day. <laughs> so if you got a couple hours to spare every day, I'll be here, all right? Here we go. This is Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Comment amen down below. That's Psalm 91. That is a one of the most powerful, powerful Psalms in scripture. And when I say powerful, I mean that's relative to us because every single you know verse in the bible is is powerful in its own merit but for for somebody like me i i like reading this one because it's a prayer of protection we it, it allows us as humans to understand more about god's role in our lives god's role in our country and we see how many thorns has donald trump and melania trump had to go through on their journey to save this country, on their journey to carry out God's will. And if you believe in scripture, like it says in the book of Exodus, that God raises up those in authority, if God calls you by name to be a leader, it's not going to be easy, my friends. It will not, but God says, I will be with you. He gives us, in, I love this, he gives us six promises in, in this at the end. He says, uh, and, and Molly asks for us, is to call his name. God says right here, when he calls to me, 
That's all we have to do. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him. I will honor him. I will satisfy him with long life and show him my salvation. So yeah, six promises. And all we have to do is say, God, how beautiful is that? So let's get started with this awesome update from Melania. All right. So firstly, I wanted to play this clip. The left is attacking Melania Trump over reciting the Lord's Prayer. I have to share it with this, you guys. Again, when you come out and stand up for God, the left will attack you. <laughs> really, I mean, you can predict that now, especially after what we've seen with Donald Trump going out and selling those Bibles. The left started attacking Donald Trump for selling the Bible, and I've never seen such blasphemy of people blatantly attacking someone for their faith. That's exactly what they did to Donald Trump, and I personally think that's a little evil, but you know, I'm, I'm the crazy guy, all right? Let, let's watch this, though. They're, the left is attacking First Lady over reciting the Lord's Prayer. Let's watch this. And welcome back to Hannity. So on Saturday, the First Lady Melania Trump, she started the president's rally by reciting the Lord's Prayer. Watch this. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespasses against us and lead us not into temptation but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. evil for it time is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen amen wow i have goosebumps all over my body right now i can feel it this is what we need my friends this is what we need back in our country and the crowd erupted in applause when the First Lady finished reciting the prayer, but she was heavily criticized on social media and elsewhere. Joining us now with reaction, the president of Liberty University, Jerry Falwell Jr., and from Samaritan's Purse, Franklin Graham. So, first of all, I'm reading the, the, the comments about this. She got accused of plagiarizing by reciting the Lord's Prayer. All right, we all then are guilty of plagiarism by reciting this prayer. I would be guilty of plagiarism every video when I read the Bible. And, you know, then they called it a dictatorship and then some said, well, she was reading. She didn't look like she was reading. She looked like she was bowing her head to me. And I'm thinking, as far as I know, Reverend Graham, isn't this a Judeo-Christian country founded on Judeo-Christian principles? Uh, Sean, you're right. And listen, when uh, when Melania did this, I thought to myself, this is the first time in American history of politics, as far as I know, where the first lady uh, stood and and recited the Lord's Prayer before she introduced her husband. I thought it was tremendous. Could you imagine Hillary Clinton doing that? Michelle Obama or Jill Biden doing that? I couldn't. I couldn't. And it, it resonated, Sean, with not only millions of Christians here across this country, but also uh, around the world. I'm talking about Christians uh, halfway around the world that saw that. Uh, that that encouraged them to think that the First Lady would, would recite a prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ gave. And here she is reciting it before the whole world. I was so proud of her, and I just, uh, I just couldn't stop talking about it. I thought it was tremendous. That is tremendous. We should keep talking about this, my friends, that Melania Trump shared the Lord's Prayer when given the opportunity. She's, she's a true leader, remember. What does it mean to be a leader? In my opinion, I think being a true leader is leading somebody to God. If you are a true leader, you should be lead, if you're a, a true leader of a husband, you're leading your wife to God. If you're a true leader as a mother, as a father, you're leading your children to God. If you're a true leader of our country, you're leading your people, citizens to God. I think that's what Donald Trump and Melania Trump are doing. They really are. I mean, how often do they talk about God and give praise to Jesus? It, it's, it's beautiful. Not like how Joe Biden banned the art of any religion on Easter eggs. It's so weird. 
And so um, I'm proud of her. I'm as proud as I can be of our first lady. She's such a look at that person. Awesome. And of course, the left is going to attack. And Sean, they're going to do everything they can to try to beat up uh, our president and uh, his wife, the first lady, his children. They're they're going after everybody. Could you imagine they're going after Melania for reading the Lord's Prayer? Oh my gosh, she read the Bible. They're literally go they're they're oh my gosh, she didn't have it memorized. She's reading it. She's reading the Bible. Oh my gosh. But there's millions and millions of Christians out there that uh, stood behind uh, uh, President Trump. And they're going to continue to stand behind him. And I just hope he keeps going forward. I, I certainly hope that the First Lady is not discouraged because of uh, the left who want to try to, yeah. to embarrass her some way. But she did a great job, Sean. A fabulous job. You know, she I, really I, did. I mean, and oh, I, not only does, Donald, does Melania Trump talk about God, but listen to Donald Trump here. Worship government. Talk about God. This is... Donald Trump here talks about how his administration is wanting to protect those freedoms too. Community. Let's listen in. And above all else, we know this. In America, we don't worship government, we worship God. He says, in America, we don't worship the government, we worship God, and this is why. People support Trump, Melania Trump and Donald John Trump. This is what America is about, my friends. Let's not forget that, okay? Our religious liberty is enshrined in the very first amendment in the Bill of Rights. The American founders invoked our creator four times in the Declaration of Independence. Benjamin Franklin reminded his colleagues at the Constitutional Convention to begin by bowing their heads in prayer. I remind you that we're going to start saying Merry Christmas again. I also want to speak to all of the people, see, you thought I forgot, in our faith community who are here with us tonight, veterans and non-veterans alike. See, Donald Trump. He wants You're to... You're <laughs> never going to be forgotten. You'll never be forgotten. My administration will always support and defend your religious liberty. That, I don't know about you, but that's all I needed to hear from Trump. Our administration will always protect our religious liberties. Listen to this, this is Melania Trump giving a speech at a Trump rally. This is beautiful. There's music, here we go. People love her. People really do. Thank you. People think that she's... Look at that smile. Come on. That's a true woman right there. Thank you. Let us pray. Our Father, wow, that's when she recited the prayer. Let's listen to it again. Who art in heaven, hallowed by thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us not our trespasses as we forgive those who trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Look at the people in the back with their hands up. You cannot get any better than this, my friends. Good afternoon. It is my honor and great pleasure to stand here before you as the First Lady of the United States. When was this? This was seven years ago, guys. The but America we envision 
is one that works for all Americans and where all Americans can work and succeed. A nation committed to a greater civility and unity between people from all sides of the political divide. I will always stay true to myself. Love that. And be truthful to you, no matter what the opposition is saying about me. Whoa. So she's even saying always. So even though this was a few years ago, she's saying, I will always, always. This is why it's so important to look at the source, guys, and not just read what the media is saying, but go back to interviews, go back to speeches from them, because these are her words that you cannot get these twisted. of you. I'm committed to creating and supporting initiatives dear to my heart, which will have impact on women and children all around the world. Yes. My husband is creating a country of great safety and prosperity. And you know, I don't like to get race involved and I, I never like, I, I kind of hate how people talk about race so much, but Democrats always say, oh, Trump supporters, they, you know, they're just, they're just a bunch of hicks and, and old white people. Well, if you take a look at the crowd, that's one of the most diverse crowds I've seen in my life. I, that's all I'm gonna say. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to introduce the President of the United States, Donald Trump. Yeah! Wow, I cannot imagine. I would love to go to an event like this, guys. Wow, how awesome is that? What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful event. Wow, just so, so awesome. And really quickly, I wanted to dive in and look at Donald Trump and Melania Trump as newlyweds, kind of just taking a look back at, at, at their story because I think it's really beautiful and you can just see the love that they have for each other. Let, let's watch a little bit of this. National cover girl has now joined us. We got uh, to discuss the media. How did you two meet? Uh, we met in New York, um, 1998. It was a fashion week, September 1998. The famous fashion week. The famous fashion week. Before New York went full liberal crazy when Letitia James and Judge and Garon came in and tried to take Letitia James, oh, I'm gonna tr get Trumpism out of New York. New York was where Melania Trump and Donald Trump met. I mean, New York used to be an amazing place. I used to go there quite a bit. Were you introduced? Well, no, we were both at the same party and uh, that's how we met. Like right me. away, I went crazy. I said I was actually supposed to meet somebody else, and there was this great supermodel sitting next to Melania. And I was supposed to meet this supermodel, and they were saying, "Look, there's so and so." I said, "Forget about her." Who's <laughs> the one on the left? <laughs> Trump was supposed to be go go to on a date with a supermodel, and Trump ditched that date, a supermodel for Melania. That is awesome. You like him right away. <laughs> it was a great chemistry and energy. We had, uh, you know, great time. He, we started to talk, and you know, it was something was there right away. It was a long engagement. It was. Why? Well, you got to make sure. You got to make sure. You got to make sure that God's in there, and God, you know, you got to make sure it's going to last forever. And it, it it is lasting forever. You know, we just had a great time and we didn't worry about it and, you know, just live lives. And then one day, surprise. Uh, Melania Trump is, is the most beautiful first lady we've ever had. And it's, all, it, it, it's kind of making a little bit more sense to me as I'm going back and watching these videos because I understand now that the left, I mean, if if you're... A, a, a party, a, a political party, and your major person is Michelle Obama, I would be jealous too of Melania. How did the proposal take place? Well, we were together, to us. we were together five years. We literally have never had an argument or, forget about the word fight, we never even had an argument. We just are very compatible. We get along. 
And I just said, you know what, it's time. And it wasn't a big deal. It was almost That's like it was obvious. It. You know what, it's time. No, I did, I did a little better than that. I, you know, without going into too much detail. But <laughs> Trump, I like how Trump respects the privacy of their marriage as well. Trump, Trump doesn't like to give everybody all the details all the time when it's unnecessary. I, I really like the respect that they have to each other. And they never, never fought once. You can tell that that God's in their in their relationship. It was time, and we just have a very good relationship. And Melania, by the way, is on the latest uh, cover on the cover of Weddings uh, from InStyle magazine. You're yes, the, you're the wedding cover. Mm -hmm. Why? And she's, and she's on the cover of Vogue. That's right. Was that was before? Yeah, that came out before the wedding. A few did, days before. Did you want that elaborate a wedding? She deserves it. She deserves that elaborate of wedding. That I mean, it, it's quite really quite beautiful. Uh, I wanted to share this too. This this just happened uh, this past weekend. Donald and Melania Trump uh, celebrated Alina Haba's 40th birthday. So I wanted to share this because the mainstream media is painting a picture that, Mel that uh, Melania Trump, Donald Trump, Alina Haba, this is Trump's top lawyer, by the way, who's kind of battling Letitia James, Judge and Garon, and she's even really defending Trump in the case with uh, Fonnie Willis. Uh, e. Jean Carroll. I mean, she's she's just really there for Donald Trump, and the media likes to say, you know, oh, they're so they're you know they're falling apart, blah, they can't afford the bond. Trump just posted the 175 million dollar bond yesterday, by the way. But I mean, look how awesome of an event this is. This is Laura Trump, Kimberly Guilfoyle, Alina Haba. They look stunning. They're glowing. They're at Mar-a-Lago. This is a uh, brother and sister, Eric Trump, Laura Trump. There. And, um, wait, are they married or are they brother and sister? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having a mind blank really quick. Uh, this is Donald Trump, Eric Trump, and, um, Donald Trump Jr., obviously. But look at this event. This is an awesome event where everybody's happy. They're holding up Alina. Alina Haba's 40th birthday. Happy birthday. I mean, they're really doing a stellar job. And I love to see Melania Trump hanging out. Donald Trump, Melania Trump, and uh, just the whole family together, right? You can see them, they're all, all here together. They just look happy, and I love it. And even though uh, Melania Trump is in this whole mess with Donald Trump, and especially with E. Jean Carroll, you know, all these wild allegations against Donald Trump, well, what does Melania Trump think about these women? I mean, because this is nothing new. Let, what does she think about this? I know you want your voice to be heard on this. So a number of women have come forward. They've made allegations against your husband. Some of them go back more than 30 years. He has said they're lying. Do you believe him? I believe my husband. I believe my husband. This was all organized from the opposition. And Melania Trump, she's very in tune with what's taking place. I think she knows a lot. And um, with the details that they go, did they ever did they ever check the background of these women? Uh, they don't have any facts, and um, even the story that came out in People magazine, the writer that she said that my husband took her to the room and started kissing her, she wrote in the same story about me that she saw me on Fifth Avenue. And I said to her, Natasha, how can I, we don't see you anymore? I was never friend with her. Oh my gosh, so there was a lie. It was a lie. I would not recognize her. That never happened. Never happened. That's why I sent them the letter, because it discredited the story. Right, you, she, your, your lawyer has sent a letter. To this is the truth, my friends. The truth is coming out from Melania herself. No wonder why their marriage is so strong, even with all this stuff going on. Because Melania is like, they literally lied. Like, I never even met that woman. And yet she said that, oh, I saw her on Fifth Avenue in New York. Melania's like, I don't even know this woman. The people of, magazine say they have to retract. Yes, because it was not true. Crazy. So how we could, how we could believe her? That never happened. I was never friend with her. I saw her, she interviewed us twice. She came to the wedding and for that story. That's it. I would not recognize her on the, on the street or ask her why we don't see her anymore. So that was another thing like, you know, people come out saying lies and not true stuff. Has this 
crazy, absolutely crazy, but we need to protect Melania Trump. We need to protect her. She's doing a, a fantastic job. And, and just take a look at this. Take a look at how prayerful and how spiritual she is. This is First Lady Melania Trump's National Day of Prayer message. This is, you know, when you're a uh, First Lady, you get the honor of being able to do these and, and kind of, you know, create these videos that get ultimately posted to the to the White House, Trump White House archived uh, YouTube channel. I mean, this is this is pretty awesome. Uh, let's take a listen to her. She's talking about the importance of prayer. I think this is very true even today. Let's listen in. On this year National Day of Prayer, we are confronted with the challenges of an invisible enemy. One that can only be defeated through unity and our nation's strength, love, and devotion to each other. All through history, Americans have unified in challenging moments and during our greatest times of need, we always turn to prayer. We do. Prayer is most important. Today, I want to ask all of you to unite and pray to protect and give strength to those who are certain- How beautiful. Melania Trump really knows the power, the power of prayer. ...with friends to share some laughter. Our dear citizens, through prayer and faith, we will get through this together. I am so proud of the way all of you have responded to this crisis. When we reach out to our Lord, let us remember, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. Amen. Amen. I love that. That's a beautiful, beautiful Bible reading. And this is a this is Donald Trump's. So you saw um, you saw uh, Joe Biden's you know Easter celebration and what he did on Easter. I mean, he you know called it the transgender day of uh, visibility. This is Donald Trump and his message for Easter. Let, let's watch this. My fellow Americans. At this holy time of the year, families across our nation gather in homes, churches, and synagogues to light candles and to praise God. During the sacred holiday of Passover, Jewish families around the world give thanks to God for liberating the Jewish people from bondage in Egypt and delivering them to the promised land of Israel. For Christians, we remember the suffering and death of God's only son and his glorious resurrection on the third day. On Easter Sunday, we proclaim with joy, Christ is risen. Both of these sacred celebrations remind us that God's love redeems the world. Almost 3,000 years ago, the prophet Isaiah wrote, darkness covers the earth, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light. In America, we look to the light of God to guide our steps. We trust in the power of the Almighty for wisdom and strength, and we praise our Heavenly Father for the blessings of freedom and the gift of eternal life. Happy Passover. Happy Easter. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. Amen. What a beautiful, beautiful uh, message from, from Passover and Easter. Donald Trump really recognizing, really recognizing... Uh, the the power of Jesus and look at this MSNBC just posted this yesterday Trump sees the Bible as just another prop for him what a massive joke and not only that but look at this even Saturday Night Live I don't want to play this because I don't want to get copyright but look how wild this is they just posted this this past Saturday Saturday Night Live making fun of Donald J Trump and making fun of the Bible and about Jesus this is wild to me, and I cannot believe that this is on TV, that Saturday Night Live uh, is still on. They're, they're making fun of Jesus? Is this what they're doing? I don't even want to watch this. They're, make, they're, they're making Donald Trump the pretending that Donald Trump rose as Jesus. I mean, this is truly sick, my friends. If you watch Saturday Night Live, I mean, I don't know. I can't find a better display of just pure sickness in our country right now. This is, 
again, I don't want to say evil because when, when you start throwing around that world, a lot of people start, um, you know, again, like thinking that it's crazy talk, but we have good, we have evil in this world. Okay. We all know that. All right. If you know, if you've been alive for more than a few years, you've pr probably seen that. But when you're, when you're make putting a display of mockery of a, of any faith, really, I mean, this just so happens to be Christianity, but th this could be any religion, quite frankly, this could be Judaism. This could be, um, Latter-day Saints. Uh, it, it could be, uh, what, what's Mormonism really, really, um, it could be, uh, a Muslim. I, I don't care what, what religion you are. You do not do this. You do not do this. And, and it's so wild because you take a look at this man who's running for president and you're putting Trump in a basket. Like guys, if you are not realizing what's really taking place in our country right now, I mean, this is wild. This is absolutely wild. And I, I, I don't, I, I'm speechless. I'm so well, speech. I'm so speechless. I don't even know what to say. And MSNBC, they have the audacity to also do this. Trump sees the Bible as just another prop for him. Could you imagine? I mean, because you're Democrat and because you can make fun of Christianity, it, it's all, it's all fine. What if you made fun of the Quran? I mean, if, what if, what if uh, Donald Trump or, or who, I, mean, I don't even want to use, I don't even want to like feed into that, but what if a, uh, what if a Republican lead news show, what if Fox News, let's, let's just use Fox News, for example, what if Fox News and uh, Sean Hannity or, or um, you know, Laura Ingram or whoever were, was saying that the Quran is just another prop for, I don't, I don't know what, for, I know Biden doesn't believe in the, in the Quran, but I mean, it, it's just, I'm trying to say this is a wild double standard here that it's okay for the left. I mean, it's, it's definitely not okay, but it, it's, but people see this and they say, oh yeah, you know, it's all, it's all fine. You know, Trump selling God bless the USA Bibles for 59 99. It's just another, Donald Trump's just using religion. No, he's not. He's not doing that at all. It, it's sickening to me. And I don't, I'm really like beyond words, honestly. Uh, this is Donald Trump talking about his wife. Um, wanted to play a little bit of this. This was from their Easter um, celebration. The, the Melania Trump, this was just this past Sunday. Melania Trump, Baron Trump, Donald Trump together. Looking absolutely fantastic. And celebrating Jesus. I believe that was Doug Durgum actually there. But this is Donald Trump. They're playing music, which is why I can't play the actual sound. But it, it looks really beautiful. This is the Easter celebration at Mar-a-Lago where they're all together dancing. Trump's dancing. <laughs> Baron Trump there. There's Melania. It just looked like a really awesome time. They're out there. They're celebrating. And they're celebrating Jesus, really. That's what they're doing. And they all look great together. So God bless them. God bless America, Donald Trump and Melania Trump. Um, they, uh, you know, they're they're doing really good. This is uh, Melania is about to be a huge help to Donald Trump. Melania Trump just hinted she'll soon rejoin Donald Trump on the campaign trail. Stay tuned. I guess she was asked. There's actually a, a clip of her being asked. Okay, so I finally found the uh, video of, of Melania Trump talking about this just came out. Um, Melania Trump and Donald Trump talking about the future. So this is the latest clip I've seen of Melania Trump speaking. So thumbs up the video for getting actual, you know, up to date breaking news. I, you know, I do like to show older clips as well just to tie everything together. But this is the latest clip I, I found of her actually speaking about the campaign. Let's watch this. I think it's a shame. I think it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace to our nation what they did to him. Trump, are you going to return to the campaign trail with your husband? Stay tuned. She says, stay tuned. Melania Trump, simple words. All she says in response to, are you joining your husband on the campaign trail soon? She says, stay tuned. So. Really awesome news from Melania Trump, Donald Trump. Let me know your thoughts down below and remember to keep praying, my friends. Keep praying. Prayer is powerful. We'll talk to you soon.